So let's go ahead and begin to add the functionality to each of these inputs. And the way we're going to do that is by using state management. And because we're using state management, then what we need to do is we need to transform this component into a client component by saying use client so that we can go ahead and create our use state hook right here and not create but import it and then we know that for each of these inputs we need to have a state that manage this, manages them so the first one is the event name so i'm going to create an input here with a state value called event name and the function called set event name and this is going to be equal to use state and by default it's going to be an empty string and then i'm just going to copy and paste one two three four five and then this is going to be event date and set event date this is going to be set event description description and then this is going to be event description and then this one is going to say event location and sorry this is set event location and then the state value is event location and then finally we're going to have event organizer and set event organizer and then this last one you can remove it and then what we're going to do is we're going to transform each one of these inputs into a controlled input so that when we type inside of them then they're going to populate our state values so the way we do that is we're going to go ahead and add a value attribute to the input here and the value for this is event name which is the state value that we've just created and then when we change the input we're going to add an on change handler here and then we're going to access our synthetic event of e where we're going to say set event name into e dot target dot value now i'm going to save that and just to test it out i'm going to inspect right here and i have an extension that is called react dev tools so you can go ahead and install that from the chrome web store or whichever web store that you're using depending on your browser and then when you install it you're going to have access to two more tabs here called components and profiler in this case i want to take a look at the components and what i want to do is use this mouse icon right here so that i can get this particular component which is our form so that you're going to see that we have created a state right here which is the five items that i've just created on top but now look at this if i type inside the description then our state is not being filled because it is not yet controlled by react but if i type inside the event name because now the react is controlling this event name now look at this if i say guards then you notice that this is now being populated so that's what we want to go ahead and do for each of the inputs so we have the first one done so what i'm going to do is just copy this and paste it on the second one and then change this to event date so event date and then this is going to say set event date and then paste it on the third one this is going to be event description and then set event description and then on the fourth one paste it in this is going to say event location and then set event location and then the fifth one is going to say event organizer so event organizer and then set event organizer now save that and then now take a look at this now if i go ahead and try to fill these inputs then they're going to be filled as well depending on the items that we place inside the input so in the description let me just say google africa da 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 and you'll notice that now it's being filled the location is going to be kenya event organizer is google and you notice that now our state is being filled out so that is working correctly for our inputs so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create our on click event or rather on submit event so that when you click on this then the input or rather our form is going to be submitted but not in this way see how we clicked on the submit button but now it filled out this and then it reloaded the entire thing I don't want that to happen i want react to manage all of this by itself so what i'm going to do is let me remove the height of screen this scroll bar is bothering me so back inside the form <laughs> inside our section here let's move the height of screen and then instead let's go ahead and say this but that on large screens the padding y is going to be 20 so that we have that i think that is much better because the scroll bar was bothering me
So let's go ahead and create our on submit event. So for the on submit, we're going to add the on submit event on the form. So on submit, we're going to call a function here called handle submit. And then just to be on the safe side, I'm also going to go into our submit button. And then I'm going to add an on click because it is a button. It doesn't have a submit event. It has a click event. So here I'm going to say handle submit for the function, which is basically the same function as the one on the form. And then let's go ahead and create it. So I'm going to say function handle submit, and I'm going to use the synthetic event of E once again, so that, so that I can say E dot prevent default, which is going to prevent the default behavior of the page reloading. So let me just go into a new localhost here, so that if I go into new event, I can say ads and then let me select a date here and then a description it doesn't really matter is that here now when i say create new event then the form doesn't submit and the page doesn't reload so let's go ahead and now handle how we can pass this into like the home page and inside the booked events but first of all let's finish creating our submit event and so what i'm going to do is the following i want to go ahead and add a try catch block and then inside the try block, so inside the first block right here, I want to go ahead and test for whether any of these state values are empty. And then if they are empty, then I want to go ahead and show some kind of error. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say that if there is no, no event name, meaning if it is not populated, meaning if it is null or undefined or an empty string as, as it is by default, then I want to go ahead and say toast dot error toast dot error and the toast notification that i want to show is event name is required now where does this come from this comes from a package that we're going to install right away which is called react toastify so Control j to open up your terminal and then add a new terminal here and then as it is adding it then i'm going to say npm install react dash toastify and then I'm going to let that install, and then I'm going to import this on top. So right below our React import right here, I'm going to say import toast, and then we also need to import the toast container, which is what is actually going to be rendered on the screen. And this is coming from react-toastify. And then we also need to import the CSS file that this uses so that it is spelled out correctly. So I'm going to say import react-toastify, react toast toastify forward slash dist forward slash react toastify capitalized dot css that's how you import the css file so that now we can actually go ahead and and try it but let's fill out the catch the catch block first let me say toast dot error and i'm going to say that for this error i'm going to say an error occurred, occurred in a component let me just have it as that. Now, when I go ahead and save that, now look at this. Let's reload that so that this input is not filled. Now, when I create new event, then it should show me a... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We need to render the toast container. I just said we need this to render out on the screen. So let's render out the toast container. Oops, toast container. And then let's remove this one that I've imported by accident. So toast container. So save that. Now look at this. Create new event. Then it shows a toast that says event name is required. And if you want to make it a bit more fancy, what you can do is you can pass in a prop here called theme. And then when you set it to colored, then it's going to fill out the container, the toast container with like the colored, uh, the colored, what's it called? State, the colored state of the, the error or the message or the info da, 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 that you passed in. So this is the error state. It is red. And then on the success state, it's going to be green. So we're also going to create that as well. Now, I don't want this to take so long because by default, it takes five seconds before it exits. What you can do is you can go ahead and pass in a close here and say auto close, auto close, and then set it to like however many milliseconds that you want. In this case, this is two seconds, so 2000 milliseconds. So that now we can say uh, create an event and it is much faster. I think that is much better for me. And then just so that we don't have to do this for every single input, because we're going to be adding this check for every input, what you can do is you can just remove it from here and then you can pass it inside your container. So auto close 
and then set it to 2000 milliseconds which is two seconds or how depending on whatever time that you want to pass in so that is much better now we have done that for the event name so we need to go into the event date so let's just copy this so copy and then let's paste it one two three and four so this is event date and then this is going to say event date is required and then event description and then event description is required and then this is event location and then event location is required and then event organizer and then event organizer is required save that and then now we can test out each of the inputs so we already know that the okay that happens that happens because all of the inputs are not filled but you know that if i fill this first one and then say create new event then it removes it if i fill in the second one and then so on and so forth so each of the error states is working as you can see right there and then finally when all of the inputs are filled and i say create new event i want to actually create the new event so what we're going to do is the following first of all we need to fix this see how it showed all of the error states at once i don't want that to happen so what we're going to do is instead of using if statements here we're going to use if else if statements so we're just going to add else if right there and then else if i know let me just copy this paste it and then paste it there and make sure that you space it out so else if and then when using the else if the the when you're using the if else if statement you need a final else statement so that it actually closes out and you don't run into an infinite loop so for the else statement we are actually going to now create the event that we have typed in so i'm going to say the new event so const new event is going to be as follows we know that we want to pass in a unique id for every new event and we're going to create that unique id and then the name of the event is going to be the event name so event name and then the date of the event we're we what we're doing here is we are simply creating an object for the new event so that we can populate it when we submit the the form so we are saying that this new event object is going to have a property called id which is going to be coming from somewhere and then it's going to have a property called name which is going to be the event name and then a property called date which is going to be the event date and then another property called description description which is the event description and then another property called location which is the event location and then another property called organizer which is the event event organizer now the new date here i want it to be a unique id not the new date really but the id i want it to be a unique id always so what i can do is i can go ahead and say this is going to be coming from uuid v4 which is a package that we can install so control j to open up your terminal and then let's say npm install uuid that is the package name and then the way we import it is as follows we go ahead right below this and then i'm going to say import v4 so version 4 as uuid v4 from uuid which we have just installed and then now i can go ahead and call it because it is a function as you can see right there and then when i call it every time that we create a new event then it is going to create an id for that event as well which is going to be a unique id and the purposes for that unique id is just so that we can access a specific id without a specific event without conflicting ids now let's go ahead and test this out so let me just go ahead and say console log new event just to see whether we are going to be getting this new event so save that and then now look we can try out our error state first of all so create new event now you can see that none of them or sorry only one of them is showing up instead of all five of them at once now let's go ahead and inspect let's create a new event here with just some dummy data just some dummy data just for testing and what we should see in the console when we submit is we should see our object right here so look at that see how now we have a date which is what we've set inside here and then the description id which is coming from uuid see that 
and then the location name and then the organizer so what we need to do now is we need to get this from here and then take it into local storage we need to store it in local storage and then when we submit our form then we need to clear out the inputs and so how do we do that we do it as follows instead of just console logging here we're going to say this so we're creating a new array const events and just like you would do when in a to-do list you would have like an array here which would house everything uh, that is coming from the input when you fill it in so that when you create a new event then you append it inside that array now in this case we don't have that array because we're not using the the arrays we want to use local storage so i'm going to say this const events is equal to and we're going to say json dot parse and then we're going to say local local storage i can't type local storage dot get item and we want to get an item called events and in case events does not exist then we want to go ahead and pass in our pipe right here and then we want to say return back an empty array and then in that case then we're going to say events dot push new event meaning go ahead and push this new event add it into local storage and then once we do that we can go ahead and say local storage local storage dot set item and then we're going to want to go ahead and say set item called events and then we're going to say json dot stringify json dot stringify and then we want to stringify the events that we've just created on top so that we can actually read them in our browser now once we do that then i want to go ahead and clear out the inputs once we type in so i'm going to say set event name into an empty string and then copy this oops copy paste it four more times this is going to be set event date this is going to be set event description this is going to be set event location and then this is going to be set event organizer like so save that and then now let's go ahead and do this let's test it out so i'm going to go ahead and when i submit this then this should not be filled in anymore so create new event see how now it is it is no longer populated the, our form is no longer populated and then it is no longer in the console log but if i go into application and then i go into local storage then i can go ahead and say let me search for my key called events uh where is it events is right here and the reason why this is showing up so many times is because i was testing it out i was testing it out in the original application so let me go ahead and just delete this so that you can actually see that it is working so delete that and then delete booked events as well so delete this one and i think that's now okay so let's go ahead and reload it and then let me add a new event so new event with the date here and that and that and that and then when i say create new event then we can go ahead and we can see that a new key is created here with events which when i expand it has my events inside there okay so local storage is working now what we need to do is i want to add a toast notification once we create once we add that to an item to local storage so i'm going to say toast.success because now this is the success message and then i'm going to say new event added and then i'm going to save that and then now we can go ahead and pass in some dummy data here and pass in some dummy data and then when i say create new event then our toast notification shows up fantastic so that is our new event page and in the next video we're going to begin to create our home page which is going to show all the events that we have added inside here